Let us imagine you were the Pope. First of all, it is important to point out that as the Pope, in addition to being an alleged successor of St. Peter the Apostle as leader of the Roman Catholic Church, you are also a monarch, a head of state of Vatican City. There were 266 popes in the history of the Catholic Church, and all of the most recent popes had fairly similar daily routines as their predecessors. Let's go through your daily schedule. You reside in the Apostolic Palace in Vatican City, which is the official residence of the Pope. It's interesting that Pope Francis chose to live in Doma Sancta Martha, basically a guest house and a hotel for clergy that is certainly not as fancy as the Papal Palace. You wake up at around 4.30 a.m., when both Vatican City and the City of Rome are still asleep and blissfully quiet, so you can uninterruptedly nurture your relationship with God. You start your day with a prayer. You reflect on the scriptures, which will be the basis for your sermon for the day. That way, you are prepared for the morning service that starts at 7 a.m. at Santa Martha's Chapel. This service is always celebrated in Italian and is partially open for the public, so it is probably one of the best ways for people to get close to you. After the morning service, you pray among the people and greet everyone outside the chapel. At 8 a.m., you have a breakfast at Santa Martha's Cafeteria. Santa Martha's Cafeteria basically serves food like any other Italian restaurant. You eat lunch and dinner there as well. You rarely eat alone. After breakfast, you go to work. During the working period of the day, there is probably no clear distinction between your role as a religious leader and as a statesman. One of the first things you do is flip through the news. Pope Francis, for example, was known for his conspicuous desire to stay informed about current events and global affairs. He even followed the news reports in several different languages. After exploring the news, you answer your mail and make calls to various people of interest, especially to those people whose letters personally touched you. Afterward, you usually book appointments and meetings, which commonly start at 11.30 a.m. and take place on the second floor of the Apostolic Palace and last for about two hours. The afternoon starts with lunch that is mostly based on the heart-healthy Mediterranean diet. You then take a walk. Unlike his predecessors, Pope Francis usually does not take a walk after lunch. Pope Benedict XVI would walk around balconies of the Apostolic Palace, enjoying delightful views of Rome and talking to his secretaries. Pope John Paul II, on the other hand, would walk around the Vatican Gardens while praying the Rosary. It is 2 p.m. and you take a break, commonly in the form of a nap. The length of a nap depends on the Pope. Shortly after that, you go back to work. Your work after a break consists of appointing bishops, reviewing speeches, and speaking to a nuncio, an ecclesiastical diplomat, the diplomatic representative of the Holy See. This is followed by meetings with the church's big fish until 7 p.m. You then pray with your colleagues before dinner. A light dinner starts around 7 p.m. It is self-serving. After dinner, you usually read church-related documents. This is a form of relaxation after a busy day of a person who plays two very important roles. You close your day the way you started it, by communicating with God. After the prayer, you go to sleep. This would be your daily routine if you were the Pope. Popes are known for their frequent diplomatic and religious visits to other countries that deviate significantly from their regular schedule. These visits gather huge masses of faithful people and are often complemented by the easily recognizable Pope Mobile. Thanks for watching. Click like and share if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more of our content.